The first thing I remember is I organized my class in second grade to adopt a manatee in Florida. I think you have to create the opportunities you want to pursue. That's one of my life mottos. I like to start things. Throughout my entire life, I've been surrounded by an appreciation for the natural world. It's a cool tree. It really is. My parents got their degrees in marine biology and then went to work for the USDA. So I grew up with conversations about agriculture at the dinner table. The core problem that really gets me, I think there are just parts of society that are being left behind that are going to be hit with the brunt of climate change. And that's why I started Ambrook. You know, there's a hollowing out of the mid-sized family farm, a hollowing out of, of a way of life. So the mission behind Ambrook is to help natural resource industries, starting with agriculture, make sustainability profitable. It seems unlikely to call a farm in your basement a farm, but it's like, we know we ultimately want to have a, ideally a 35 acre farm. I'm in the middle of my uh, business plan right now, and uh, I got it in, in print format, and I just I couldn't get all to it. It's just paperwork. To expand and grow where I need to, I'm running 50 does, I need to run 200. Right now, a lot of farmers can't afford to invest toward more sustainable practices that are better for their bottom lines in the long term. So we're trying to disrupt the way that farm finance works today. Why do you think ag is characterized as the least digitized industry? Well, this is my accounting for the straw that we had delivered uh, two weeks ago. I mean, this is a receipt for $5,000. It's a good receipt. <laughs> I come in and I wash my hands, get all the cow crap off my hands and get on the computer. <laughs> Like, I don't want to, but I have to, because there's programs out there that I need to research for myself to grow my business. Yeah, when, when you're kind of where we're at, every penny's gonna count. These are people who are working full-time jobs, you know, not necessarily in an office. And on top of that, at the ends of their days, they also have to fill out all this paperwork just to do their job. We're trying to take on some of the oldest and most established financial institutions in the country and I'm fairly young. So we haven't built relationships for 20 years with the major players in agriculture. <laughs> and so the way that we build relationships with these farms is to build software to help farmers and ranchers find and apply for farm funding. And eventually where we're going with this is financial planning, giving access to better working capital and just becoming a much better financial partner. Any programs that you guys can put me onto to be able to help me grow, man, I'm all about it. And I know the paperwork's gonna come along yeah, with totally. it. So, yeah. We're trying I, to make, figure out ways to make that simpler. Do you guys, you see you have an app? Yes, um, it's not in the app store yet. It's, we're, in, we're in private. Beautiful, not private, beautiful, but it's simple. You that's, know what I mean? That's what we're trying that's, to do. You know, it's simplicity. We want to help increase the, the solvency of these farms. Thank you for your help. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It, it's amazing what you can do with high tech, but the question is whether you can create something that makes it the easy way to do the right thing. Yeah. And that is real opportunity. The, the 1946 tractor, I mean, absolutely no tech, and it's the only one that starts consistently. Yeah. That one I know will go. Mm -hmm. and that's not true of anything else. Low tech, low tech works. We want to become someone that people can rely on, knowing that something will start <laughs> when you need it to start, you know? It is trust. Yeah. Like, yeah. The risk here is not about Ambrook failing. The risk here is that industries don't understand how to adapt to climate change. There's no plan B <laughs> for like having a sustainable food source. It's a hard problem to solve, and a lot of people have tried. I like actually firmly believe that like the, the are we the right 
people to do this is just a matter of like sheer will. <laughs> no one wakes up one day and is like the perfect machine to build the perfect thing. You just make yourself into that person. You know, if people think about all the clubs they might have started or might have been a part of in school, starting a company, it still does feel like a group of friends <laughs> who are working on their laptops next to each other, trying to make something happen in the world. I'm working on the thing that is like my life thesis. Being a founder is a core part of my identity. I feel lucky that it can be.